this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we're talking about the full season of The Last of Us. We gave sort of an early preview after the first, was it one episode or a couple episodes? Yep. But now that the, the finale dropped, we all watched it. We're going to wrap up the whole season. We wanted to do another take on this because, in my opinion at least, this is among the best TV that is out there. Mm-hmm. These, this season was fantastic. It, it really hit all of, all, all of the buttons, right? It did everything right. I have almost no notes. Right. It was just a fantastic season. And why is that? And I can, I can answer my own question. Yeah. That's because this show wasn't about like showing how cool the zombies and special m- makeup is and all that. This show is about people. It's a show about people. And, you know, putting people into extreme circumstances is a good backdrop for drama, right? It gives a lot of reason for there to be a lot of feelings and high emotion and a lot of of, uh, important types of interaction that happen with people when things become very difficult and hard. That's why we like to put people in extreme situations. Like, there's a giant shark in the water. Like, that that level of stress makes it interesting. Snakes on a plane. But, my God, the character development is, I think, almost at an iconic level here. Future writers should look at this show and see how it's well... It's almost a template of how you do a great show. Exactly. Yeah, so like when we talk about our series of how to, what's good versus versus great versus bad science fiction, there's characters, awesome characters, mm-hmm. plot, the plot was fantastic, world building, absolutely fantastic, and then the aesthetic and all the special effects and everything, it was fantastic. So they, they had all the all of the elements were together, and, and it, it's a good example of what happens when all of those things not only are there, but support each other Mm -hmm. in a thoughtful way. You know, like the characters are driving the plot and the world is driving the characters. And you know what I mean? It's all happening. It's all happening together. And yet it's the characters are, you you know them, you get, you get to feel like you're with them, but they're not predictable, mm-hmm. you know? You know, in this, in the zombie genre, because yeah. these are essentially zombies, you know, they're zombies, different yeah. flavor of zombies. They're um, fungal zombies, yeah. Any good zombie show will start off where it's man versus zombie or man mm-hmm. versus nature, say, because you could, whatever, super nature, right? However you want to classify it. But then those shows always need to, don't always, but they should always turn into man versus man because man yeah. is the ultimate monster, right? In a way, yeah. This show went immediately to that. Yeah. They never glorified the zombies and had these episodes where it's just about the special effects and zombies. Like they immediately took you to the point where the real enemy out there is the other people, other people. that are trying to survive. And, and you know, that environment is so deadly that the zombies aren't even the thing to worry about. Mm-hmm. They're they're there and they're in the background. But if you notice in this show in particular, you know, 90% of the bad things that happen are because of other people. Right. Yeah. A, a big hint to me that this was... Uh, such a well-crafted show we went like two episodes i think we saw one one Mm -hmm. zombie in two episodes and normally i'd be like whoa wait we need we need more zombies i didn't really care that much right because everything else was so good that said you know you could throw in a couple of zombies more if they wanted to and i'd appreciate it but they don't really have to do it and that's that's an amazing testament Mm -hmm. for me i mean as a zombie fan yeah it's not zombie porn Right. I mean, it's not, not just there's anything like, wrong with that. Yeah. But I'm just saying like, sometimes like <laughs> we, we watch shows that are really just eye candy. We watch shows yeah. that are really just the, the horror element or whatever. We watch them for one slice. This was just great storytelling. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do some spoilers oh my God. now. So if you, I know at least one of the people watching live didn't, uh, didn't see the season yet. Uh, so if you want to dip out for 10 minutes and then come back for the next two episodes, um, we're going to do some massive spoilers here. So we're not going to hold back. So the, the, the last episode, everybody dies was the best episode of the season, in my opinion. All the episodes were great. There were yeah. so many. There were lots of standout episodes, but, but you know. Hard to beat episode three, but yeah, I Yeah, episode I get three you. was fantastic, but because this this was such a great cap. Culmination. On the season. Um, yeah, I mean, know, because. It, it, are, I mean, it was the most, to me, it was the, emo- the most emotionally powerful episode Oh, my God. Of the season. Well, we know the two main characters so much better now yeah. than we did at episode three. Yeah. And I thought I knew them pretty well back then. And if you, if you try to remember, yeah. I, yeah, like those are, yeah, we're the, we didn't see much of the main characters. But, you know, having Joel um, and Ellie turn this massive corner in their relationship, like it's been building the whole time. Yeah, she was cargo for many episodes. Ellie was cargo Mm -hmm. to Joel, and he he repeated that over many episodes. Yeah, but he was kind of, he, I think, was trying to convince himself that she was cargo. Not like, 
emotionally she actually was because she never was cargo. But he had to convince himself that she was because he wasn't ready to go there. He yeah. wasn't ready to have another daughter because he couldn't stand the loss again. The loss crippled him. It's 20 years later. Hey, he's right. He's, he's still, still crippled by that loss. We're in a post-apocalyptic world. Loving people in this world is, dangerous. is emotionally dangerous. Yes. So it makes perfect sense. I mean, he was he was emotionally crippled from what, what happened with mm -hmm. his daughter. Then, you know, as we come to find out, he turns into a pretty bad dude. I don't know yeah. exactly what he and his brother were doing. But there was I, bad stuff. But there was bad stuff going on. He's killed a lot of people. And... What I find awesome mm -hmm. is that all of the bad stuff that he learned, right? All of that ruggedness and being able mm -hmm. to kill people and, and wake up the next morning and still, you know, live your life. He needed all of that yeah. to save Ellie. Yeah. And when in, in that moment, when you're nah. in the hospital and he flips that switch yeah. and he's like, I need to save her and I'm going to do what I know how to do. And that means I have to kill everybody. everybody. And he has the skill set to do it. Again, that's good character building. Yep. Right, the character has a history. He has a personality. He's got some quirks, and he's got skills. And we know what what the, his skills are, and his background is, and his personality is, and the, we know about his personal demons, and they all play a role. They all play a role at some point in the season. And a good character has an arc. Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously, this is you know the the, the source material for this was you know the, the, the video the game. game, the video game, and. So the, and they it pretty closely followed it. There were some interesting deviations, but the um, thoughtful you know, so, deviations. Yeah, so thoughtful deviations. But so these these characters were already there, you know. So they weren't starting from scratch. But still, the way they arced his character, Ellie's character, incredible. Appropriate use of flashbacks Ugh, and yeah. their relationships. So they're individually arcing. Their relationship is undergoing its own arc, mm -hmm. and that's why this that last episode. Because sometimes it's easy to build up a story. It's easy to create mystery and create wonder. Not easy, but it's a lot easier. It's the Lost phenomenon. Like the first season of Lost <laughs> was like, well, this is wonderful. But then, but you got to bring it home, right? And it's hard to bring it home. Yeah. And in this series, in this season, they absolutely did, which means they knew what they were doing the whole time. Right. And I love to see that payoff at the, I love to see that payoff. And it was wonderful. I enjoyed every episode. I really liked the episode of this season where Ellie and her best friend, you know, basically realized they have feelings for each yeah. other. And they had that whole, the whole thing was building up to what we knew was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was so obvious to yeah. me that we knew that there was, they yeah. were going to get attacked. Um, and then what I like is they didn't really, they didn't show everything happen. Yeah. They didn't show what happened when they when her friend died or how how she died or whatever and then they bring it back so now she's talking to joel and she tells him what happened to her yeah. and how she had to kill yeah. her, her best the friend the foreshadowing was magical it was perfect the it was so cool because it was. it was so meaningful because we knew it was hanging out there we knew that he didn't know that which makes it makes us want him to know it for some reason mm -hmm. right as an audience member mm -hmm. we want we want him we want her to tell him and get closer to him because of it yeah. and they yeah. gave it to us i was puzzled that they didn't go to that end when in that scene they didn't show the finale of her killing her friend and we everything we knew that happened and i was i was thinking all right they're going to bring that back and they're going to show it to us cuz it's going to be powerful but, but but instead they had her reveal it at the perfect time to yeah. hi, to him yep. and that's even better it was even better yeah. than seeing it exactly so a, a good writer a good show knows that you don't have to tell the audience everything you don't have to show the audience yeah, everything right. you can just show how the characters are reacting to the thing right you know i remember one of the iconic examples of that is was in one flew over the cuckoo's nest where they are you know um dragging you know one of the uh, you know, one of the inmates down the hall and he's screaming. They did cut back and forth, but the, the powerful part of that scene was not watching the guy got dragged, get dragged down the hall. It was watching the reaction yeah, of the reaction. people looking at it happening. That's more powerful. Right. So what, it was more powerful to see Ellie tell Joel yeah. than to see it happen. Her reaction emotionally right. this, this much time later was way more powerful. Right. And I, I would argue a more iconic scene is in Alien when they're seeing the alien burst from the chest oh, for yeah, the I was first time. That, those reaction shots. Yeah. And they were genuine because they the actors <laughs> didn't know what was going to happen. It is right. arguably like, yeah, sure, it's scary watching the alien come out, but when you see that that silence, you know how like yeah. there's a mammalian 
very very mammal like silence like of shock yeah. <laughs> and they do that they did it so freaking well on that show oh, great God. so <laughs> so the um, don't touch it <laughs> when uh, another moment of uh, the whole series yeah. that i loved there was so much in this last episode when ellie tells joel almost almost detached in a way i'll follow you anywhere like yeah. basically i love you that's it. Right. Like I'm stuck. I'm, yeah. I'm stuck with you because I love you, and I, you know, and, and they, you really feel the appreciation, even though she's doing it in the detached way, because it even added more to it somehow. Yeah. It was right, it, right. expertly directed. I mean, the director really. I love the actress. Really did. I, you know, I love uh, the actor as well. You know, totally, absolutely. I mean, Pedro is incredible. Yeah, he's so good. Yeah. Yeah. He so really I think overall, as a TV show, um, don't be don't be scared because it's another zombie show, again, because it doesn't matter. This is a show about people. This is a show about people who are struggling and yeah. people who are very afraid, You're right? And a, another telltale sign of a great show, are you debating what happened the next day, right? Yeah. There are some of you watch a show, season finale, whatever, and like you're immediately on with the rest of your life. You couldn't care less. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it made no real impact on you. As someone that we just recently heard, it's over. It's and you don't over. talk about it. You don't need to talk about it after. Some shows and TV shows, you have to talk about it. You have to talk about it. Did, you know, what was going through Joel's mind when he flipped that switch, when he decided that he was going to kill everybody in order to save Ellie? Did, you know, what was he thinking? We were debating, like, did he know that, you know, what the sacrifice was? Did he maybe not believe that? Or did he just tell himself that he didn't believe that they could pull it off? Or whatever. Like, but there's even, so many different things, that two ways you could dissect that. It's like you could write a paper about what was going through his mind. Right. You know, at, at, when he made that decision and how complicated but that was. But you do need to was. talk about it, right? Like it's You need to talk about it. I couldn't wait to talk to you guys about the show because mm -hmm. I just watched the last episode today. And I'm like, oh my God, like you get that feeling that, like you got to talk to someone about, yes, about what yes. you just experienced. Oh yes. my, what, what, I mean, you know what I liked about what that were you scene? you thinking what? When Joel. <laughs> what? When Joel flips that switch, yeah. the Terminator switch, <laughs> it, you notice how everything kind of got muted. Yeah, and he just you see him just bang, shoot this guy, he, bang, shoot that person. Like they made it very robotic yeah. and very he, matter of he fact. He was the Terminator. He, yeah, that I was so, so thinking of that the entire time. That scene was powerful. Yeah, I'm yeah. thinking how you know in the the emotional rush of that scene, I'm thinking how can I be a Joel fan now? The guy was basically murdered. Everybody, everybody. But they were going to kill his baby girl, including including somebody who was unarmed, including the one of the probably the last surgeon on the earth, whatever. <laughs> like, how am I going to be Team Joel? But then you think about it, and you're like, you know, it's not cut and dried at all. It's not yeah. cut and dried. There's so many reasons why ethically he, very complicated. He was he's somewhat justified, you know, from a certain angle. It's not what you immediately but think. Because it's like, it, holy crap. we know the world pretty well at this point, yeah. right? Because of the nine episodes that we watch, like we know that the fireflies are not the most competent crew. Like they've been trying to do what they've been trying to do for a long time with no success, right? right. They, they didn't overthrow the local government. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you know what is another aspect of the show that's so incredible is it's very hard to have a world where there's all gray. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? In terms of the more morally speaking, it's, it's, you know, you need, sometimes you need heroes and villains, right? Yeah. Um, and it's very challenging to suck an audience in and to make you care about things when there's no pure villains and no pure right. heroes, but they did it. So you have like the fireflies. Yeah, I could kind of see where they're coming from, but they're terrorists. And, you know, the FEMA, whatever, the official, the government officials. Federals. Whatever. Yeah, they're they're doing their best, but they're they're kind of Nazis now, but, you know, in an impossible situation. So they you can kind of see it from their perspective, too. And then there are the raiders who are just trying to survive. And yeah, all right, they're assholes. But you know, what would you do if you were but in their situation? What they have to and to then survive. there's yeah, then there are communities that are surviving that need to get brutal at times. But yeah, you can kind of see that they would need to do that. There's, you can you know, the best villains, you you know, you can see things from their perspective, and yep. they kind of make sense from their if maybe warped perspective. Thanos is one of the best examples. Yeah, exactly. Of that. Exactly. Uh, there are tons of tons of villains like that. We'll be talking about that in the character episode that we're coming in, that's coming up, but. This show was like, there's all these pieces interacting and you could, you know, yeah, they all make sense from their perspective. Yeah, but in and this it makes world, it very complicated. Joe and Ellie are our people as the audience. Yes. They're our people. So we're rooting for them. Yeah, but I totally get what you're saying, Steve. Like I got every, almost every group that they ran into, they're just simply doing what everybody's doing. Like they're, they're, they're trying to get, they're scavenging I mean, for, for artifacts. Totally. They want food. They want guns. 
I mean, think about you set up a situation where, like, if I told you at the beginning of the season, there's going to be an episode where people are going to be trying to kill Ellie, and you you, you agree with them. Yeah. Right. And you know, you could maybe imagine what that scenario might be, but still, you know, you didn't see that coming. But you, that's an incredible setup. Sure. I mean, I can make a very good argument why it was worth her losing her life to maybe save the world, right? right. I mean, it's a, the stakes don't get much higher than right. that. But to Joel, because we know his backstory, yep. which is so important to why we appreciate this show so much, yeah. because we know his backstory, we know his that that girl, that, that young girl means so much to him, means mm -hmm. more than anything that could possibly mean to him. It, that girl all of a sudden became the center of his universe. Right. And this timing was so tragic too, because he basically just flipped the switch for well, her. It was, it was coming and it was a soft slot switch. It, but it was, it it was came, happening the whole time. It, but it, came, it rushed out. It yeah. rushed out. He's talking about teaching her how to play guitar. He's asking her to asking her to do puns with him. Mm -hmm. All this stuff was coming out of him right before but look, right before all the shit at the yeah. band. But look what happened in the, that previous episode, right? So first of all, Ellie is not the easiest person to get along with. She's very snippy. She's snarky. You know, she's got a lot of things in her personality that she's got armor up. Yeah. Well, think of her life. Of course. It's really, <laughs> she was born, you know... But she was almost murdered and raped in the same day. Yeah. And Joel saved her. And I think what happened was anything that was left in her that was defending her against her having feelings yeah. for him melted away. And, yeah, as, yeah. and as soon as that happened, it made his next step very as easy. As she said, everyone I have cared about has is gone, has left in one way or the other. Right. Except you. That she beca he became her anchor mm -hmm. in a very important way. And... I think we can keep going, but I think we've probably said enough. If you know, obviously, if you're listening at this point, you probably have already seen the uh, the whole season. I hope. Um, I can't wait for season two to come out. This is the yeah. bar, right? This is where yeah, television should be. Mm -hmm. You know that there's no reason. You know, obviously, you know, you can't expect everything to be a masterpiece, but the talent's out there. It's just a matter of. Are you going to invest the time and and you know and hire the writers and whatever to really raise the writing to this level? Like we got to say you this: know, when Steve. it comes out, it's like you know, it's it, not easy to do. It's not what easy, they did. but you it spoils up for us for everything else. Yeah. Of course, it does. You know? But I, we have to give it up to the crew and the writers and it's the director great. and everybody that's involved with a show like this because it really isn't easy to do what they did. This is literally one of the hardest yeah. things to do in a creative situation because you've got thousands of people, hundreds to thousands of people involved right. in one project. Right. It's super hard to do. So when you see it really come together well, it's a little mind-blowing. But we, but most of the time we see it utterly fail. I mean, look <laughs> at Lord of the Rings. I mean, I, you know, I really wanted to love that show, but like they didn't get even close to getting over the hump with, mm. with a show like that. But mm. you know, you get this, another zombie show comes out. And next thing I know, I'm like drooling when I watch the TV. I love it so much, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all in the writing. It's in the writing. Yeah. Yeah the, yeah. the subject matter doesn't really even matter. You're right. It doesn't matter it where is, it's the Good writing is good writing. Good characters are good characters. The, you know, everything else is, is just the substrate. It doesn't really make it a, good, a great or not a great show. So I, I yeah. give this show uh, on a scale of one to ten, uh, one to ten. I'm in a nine. I haven't given anything a nine ever, ever. I mean, I don't know why I would not give it a ten. You know, yeah, I'm trying nine to think plus. why. What would what would? There's always something that can always be. I, better. I hear you, but I can't think of anything that I would. You're right. That I would knock maybe, it down. Maybe more nudity. You know. Yeah. I mean, maybe next season might. <laughs> that would have been gratuitous. That would have, I think, been, <laughs> would knock it down. Next season might be even better because we know these characters so well. Yes. Yeah. And we can look forward to the idea that. They already wrote the video game, right? Mm -hmm. There's already like, you know, the video game I, I think is season two. So think about that. They're getting another plot and they're going to turn it into a, a screenplay so they can film it. Mm -hmm. And they get another chance to even make it better. You know, that's why when you say they made changes, I think that they make changes to make They're it work better on the screen. Absolutely. Very absolutely. deliberate. Absolutely. All right. If you enjoy so this show, guys, I enjoyed talking about this TV yes. show a lot. If you enjoy this show, why don't you head on over to Alpha Quadrant and number six dot com? That's our website. And we on that website, you could see the fact that we turn this show into a podcast and then we've got about a hundred other shows that we've I think we broke a hundred last week or a couple weeks ago. Um, so go to Alpha Quadrant and the number six dot com. And you know what? If you really, really enjoy the show, consider becoming a patron and help us keep making these shows because we love doing it. We'll see you next week.